everybody. I'm Kenneth Copeland. Welcome to 2024. <laughs> Praise God. You know, every day when you wake up is the beginning of your life. And um, I've never been 87 years old before. <laughs> God. I'm enjoying it. Thank you, Jesus. Let's open our Bibles today, first of all, to the third chapter of the book of Philippians, please. <clears throat> and um, we'll begin with the 13th verse. Now, it is vitally, wonderfully important for us to become God inside of me minded. This is where he lives. If you know Jesus Christ as the Lord of your life, and especially, and most important, is to be baptized in his spirit. So, as you inquire of the Lord, it's in here. Not here, not out here someplace. In your heart, not your blood pump, <laughs> your spirit, well, because that's where he dwells. So now, in Philippians chapter three, brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended. Now notice, this and I do are in italics. Well, that was at the privilege of the translators. They, they put it in there, we can take it out. <laughs> but you study, when you study, you do both and see what the, what the, uh, the, the impact is. Brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended but this one thing, forgetting those things which are behind, reaching forth unto those things which are before, I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling in God in Christ Jesus, in the anointed one and in his anointing. That's where we press. Now the woman with the issue of blood, you remember her? She came in the press behind. What does that mean? I mean, she pushed in there. She was frightened and, and we know why, because she had an issue of blood from uh, more than normal. She could have, and being out in public, she could have been in trouble for that. Now then, I want to go over here to right at the beginning of the book, Genesis chapter one. And this, this introduces the spirit of power. Genesis chapter one, in the beginning, God, Elohim, El, God, Elohim, plural. And that open, that's why it says, let us make man in our own image. So there we see the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. In the beginning, Elohim created the heaven and the earth. The earth was without form and void and darkness was upon the face of the deep. Now here he is. The Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. And God said, let there be light, or light be, there was light. Now the Spirit of God was moving. He's always moving. He's never static. Amen. And he was moving. But nothing happened until God spoke. Amen. Now right in Genesis chapter one, we have, and, it, and it's, born out in, in the 11th chapter of Hebrews that God did it by faith. By faith we understand he created the world. So <laughs> here we have him, it, the first introduction of faith in God and the introduction to the spirit of power. And he was moving on the face of the deep and God spoke and said, and it came to pass. So 
introduction of the spirit of power. He said, light be. Now, you have to go down, what, four days for our star of the sun to be created? So it's the speed of light, 186,000 miles a second. So in 24 hours, 16 billion, 94 million, uh, 764,800 miles of universe. And that's the spirit that's planning your, in my life. <laughs> that's the spirit that already has 2024 planned. He always has a plan. And the scripture said, before the foundation of the world. Praise God. So the plan is there. And uh, oh, years ago, <coughs> I, the, the Lord corrected me. And uh, it's wonderful. And I heard, I've only heard the audible voice of God one time. And we'll maybe talk about that later. But this inward voice. And the inward man, the, the, we, we can train the spirit the same as you can your body or your mind. That's you. Yes. And you train, you, you, you're, you're of a mind to listen to him the fourth chapter of the book of Proverbs, incline your ear unto my sayings. What is that? Incline. That means I'm, I'm, bent, oh, I'm bent in his direction. I want to know what he has to say. Yes. And here's what he had to say. He said, you're making plans and asking me to bless them. He said, if you'll find out the plan, it's already blessed. Yes. Well, my lightning fast mind took hold of that. <laughs> Praise God, like I should have known that first place. Well, so the, the spirit of God. Now, let, I, I want to go over here to the gospel of John. And we come here in the, in the 13th chapter. This is John's full account of what happened in that last Passover meal right before he went to the cross. So this, this uh, it, to me, it is the Passover meal that changed heaven and earth forever, forever. And we learn so much from, the, from, from, from these chapters. And we find out that <laughs> it, uh, well, thank you, Jesus. He began here, now before the feast of the Passover, when Jesus knew that his hour was come, that he should depart out of this world. See, he knew that, they didn't. Now, as you flow through here, he, he, he washed their feet, indicating he was the servant here. It's precious. So now, Thank you, Jesus. He said, look in the 16th chapter and the seventh verse. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is expedient for you that I go away. For if I go not away, the Comforter will not come unto you. But if I depart, 
I will send him unto you. When he is come, he will reprove the world of sin and of righteousness and of judgment of sin because they believe not on me, of righteousness because I go to my Father and see you no more, of judgment because the prince of this world is judged. Now that right there. Now, in the first covenant, we have all the law and the prophets. But we're over here into the second. And uh, in this one, the one sin, one. If you're not believing on him, you're done. He took care of all the rest of it. How'd he do that? He bore our sins in his own body on the tree that we being dead to sin shall live unto righteousness by whose stripes we were healed. Yes. Amen. He was made a curse for us. Therefore, we're redeemed from the curse of the law. And of course, I don't have him well knowing, but, but from what I've, come to know in 57 years of ministry, you know, you stumble up on a few things in <laughs> over 50 years, that most Christian people have never heard of that. And Brother Hagin talked about this. And, and of course, he, he pretty well proved it out because he would ask people, what are you redeemed from? Uh... Well, I don't know, sin, I guess. Well, yes and no. But that is not the correct answer. So you have to go back to the curse of the law and find out what it is. But it's not just the curse, there's also the blessing of Abraham. Yes. Yes. Amen. Now then, turn with me over here to the eighth chapter of the book of Romans. Now, don't, don't, mess up there in the book of John because we'll see some super stuff here. Romans chapter eight. Boy, that eighth chapter of Romans, whew, it is loaded. Verse 11. If the spirit of him that raised up Christ from the dead. Now there is some vital information right there. It was the Spirit of God that did it. Jesus said, and we'll see that in that meal, that, uh, or in the, in the Gospel of John, my life is mine to give or take up again. The devil has found nothing in me. It's important now. Do you remember that Pilate was surprised that he was dead so soon? They didn't kill him. He gave it up. <laughs> Said he gave up his spirit. Gave up the ghost in the King James. He gave it up. He made himself, we'll go back to the book of Philippians again. He made himself obedient unto death. Because he, he, he never broke a commandment. You don't have any right to kill him. He gave his life for us that we might live through him. Amen. Well, the spirit the spirit that raised him up from the dead dwell in you or dwell in me makes alive, quickens this mortal body. <laughs> ah. Now that's the reason it is so vitally important for us to be God inside minded. I think about him in here. 
I talk with him in here. So what do you do? You practice his presence. You talk to him and listen. (laughs) Amen. Amen. You, You listen, you remember Andre Robet? The money's in the floor. The money's in the floor. And I was there. In fact, he sowed the seed for that building. This was back when we were right at the point of having the money to buy that Cessna Citation 10. And for those of you that don't know in the aviation world, that at that time, that was the fastest civilian airplane on the planet. Others had to catch up to it. Mm-hmm. Wow. That's a fast airplane. And, uh, and the Lord spoke to us and said that we were to, the ministry was to own that. Well, I was there. It's just a great big old sheep barn with pillars and stuff in it all, all over the place. And he showed me what all we're going to do. And he sold one million South African ran into that citation tent, which turned out to be $800,000 at that time. That was the exchange rate. Well, and he's telling me about this dome and all these wonderful things. I said, "Uh uh-huh, mm-hmm. Well, I believe you, man, because he's a man of faith, and I knew that. So I believed it, and I set myself in holy agreement with he and Jenny. That's important. Any two of you on earth shall agree as touching anything that they, sh- they, they, that they shall ask, it shall be done of them for my Father in heaven, for for where three, two or three are gathered together in my name, there am I in the midst. Well, there's more than two or three of us here, but that's not what he was talking about. He's talking about that agreement. Amen. Well, he's here today. Yes. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's what this. That's what this. That's what this Bible college is based on. He is the spirit of faith. And we're against the spirit of fear. We know who that is. Well, he doesn't live here. And people say, if if I cast him out, he'll flee. No, he won't. What scripture is that? <laughs> James 4 7. Submit yourself to God. Draw nigh to God, he will draw nigh to you. What? How? By his spirit that lives within you. Resist the devil and he will flee. Now there are positive negatives. Well, I, you know, go through all that. And Satan, in the name of Jesus, you flee from me. Well, he's gone. Glory to God. Yeah, I'm not devil. Now, I told you to flee. No, he just came back. <laughs> Those are covenant words. Those are articles of a blood covenant in the blood of Jesus. James ought to know he's his half brother. Amen. How'd you like to have Jesus for your brother? <laughs> Never, ever did anything wrong. <laughs> Why can't you be like Jesus? <laughs> well, I can't till I get born again, <laughs> but now I can. <laughs> Amen. Oh, my, my. So now if I'd have known that when I was a little boy, it would have saved me a lot of trouble. <laughs> my mother was a switcher. What is the matter with the youth today? Mom and daddy, that's what's the matter with them. 
they turn up and get grown and they're, they're, they're for what's wrong with their children. My mother and daddy wouldn't put up with a bunch of foolishness. My mother was a switcher. I mean, she'd get a, she'd get a little old switch and get me on the back of my little legs and I mean, she'd make me dance. <laughs> I mean, and one day I was stupid enough. She picked up a belt. I don't remember what I did. It wasn't good, whatever it was. She picked up a belt and swung at me with that. I said, Mama, I'm, I'm tired. I give me that. <laughs> I didn't get a spanking. I got a whooping. <laughs> Man shot me. She landed on me. <laughs> don't you, she wham, don't you ever, I said, yes, ma'am, that's the end of that, <laughs> that's over. My dad was a disciplinarian, and uh, this happened twice. He said, now, don't lie to your children. Can I, next time you do that, I'm gonna spank you. Well, his word was good. Now this has all to do with part of this because we are chastened of the Lord. Yes. And I did it again. He said, you remember what I told you? <laughs> yes, sir. I'm gonna spank you. <laughs> well, it's coming. <laughs> <laughs> I have no idea who we <laughs> That was as bad as, <laughs> and there was no talking him out of it. But when it came, mm, mm, mm. oh, sonny boy. <laughs> well, I realized he disciplined me. I became his disciple. And he's my hero. Amen. Just, a, just wonderful. Well, both of them. And, uh, but, the, but the point here is they wouldn't put up that kind of foolishness out of me. And so I understood what discipline was. And then I got in the United States Army. I already understood what discipline was. I turned 21 in the Army. My dad would write notes. He didn't write letters. And we came in out of the field and, and I was all dirty and nasty and crawled down out of that deuce and a half truck. All my, all my gear was just filthy and I have to clean up all this mail call happened came over there and here's one from my dad opened it up <laughs> he said happy birthday Kenneth today you are a man <laughs> I sat there and cried leaned up against that wheel and he's just my earthly father yes. 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 my heavenly father hallelujah Becoming God inside minded. I was very aware of my earthly father. I decided I was going to chew tobacco and I cut off a big old piece of Tinsley red tag. I don't even know where I got it. Put it in my mouth. Push lawn more and hot. Well, he came back and I didn't know he was there. He said, how you doing, son? <laughs> I was already a little dizzy. He took me inside and mother said, what's the matter with him? And he said, ah, nothing, he'll be all right. <laughs> that was my dad. We're out of time. We'll be back in just a few minutes. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I discovered my calling here at KCBC. Immerse yourself in a faith community here at Kenneth Copeland Bible College. Get equipped with what you need for your next steps in life and ministry. Discover new gifts and talents and learn biblical education from seasoned instructors. Kenneth Copeland Bible College is here to help you find clarity of purpose in your life and ministry. 
find your purpose, discover your calling. For more information, go to kcbiblecollege.org. Do you ever wake up and feel like the weight of the world is on you? You know you're called to be a light for God in the darkness, but your flame has become a flicker? Feed your spirit and build your faith with Kenneth and Gloria Copeland's From Faith to Faith, a daily guide to victory. A devotion for every day of the year, each page offers scripture readings and practical word-based teachings to help you take hold of God's promises. Use it as a personal, family, or group devotional and dive deeper into the Word of God. Drawing from their own experiences, the Copelands guide you through applying God's Word to make significant changes to get on the victory side of life. Whether you're struggling with weariness, offense, relationships, finances, or addiction, From Faith to Faith will uplift your spirit and set the tone for each day to be filled with purpose and faith. Embrace wisdom and watch as you grow from faith to faith. Request your free copy of From Faith to Faith, the daily devotional by Kenneth and Gloria Copeland. Receive God's wisdom, energize your faith, and take hold of your covenant promises. Go to kcm.org slash TV special or call 800-600-7395. Offer good for 60 days. Outside the United States, shipping charges may apply. Contact your regional office for more information. Welcome to KCM.org, your study center for victory. Stay focused on truth by reading the devotional from faith to faith and the one-year Bible plan every day. Keep up with culturally relevant articles and free downloads on the blog. Click through interactive issues of the BVOV magazine with links to videos and further reading. Follow along with the question of the day. Face tough questions with answers based firmly on the Bible. Get a faith boost by reading testimonies of real-life success stories from people just like you. KCM.org meets you where you are. Of course, I have no idea about your parents and so forth, but the scripture says to honor them. Well, you don't know what they were like. It doesn't say as long as they were all right. When this book, when you honor them, then you have obeyed that realm of the covenant and then the Lord can turn things around for you. Well, it's been good, hasn't it? We'll see you again tomorrow. Until then, this is Kenneth Copeland and the Kenneth Copeland Bible College class reminding you that God loves you and we love you and Jesus is Lord. Ha! Glory to God! Kenneth and Gloria Copeland want to thank you for joining us on the Believer's Voice of Victory broadcast. To learn more about Kenneth Copeland Ministries and how we can help you grow in faith, Check out our website for free content and resources available to you on kcm.org.